Hello and welcome to this reflection from Stretton Vale Baptist Church. We're looking again at an aspect of the Easter story this week and we're going to be looking at Jesus encountering the disciples on the Emmaus Road. So we can find that in Luke 24 verses 13 to 35. <clears throat> so I'm just going to read that for us. Now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. Recognizing him, He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, he, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was going to be the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all the, the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and begin, began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. When I was younger, whenever I read this passage, I was always a bit stunned that the disciples on the Emmaus Road could meet Jesus, walk, talk and listen to him teach them, all without recognising that it was Jesus. I would think to myself, were they really that blind? But as I've gotten older, I can totally understand and recognise in my own life where there have been times that God has been moving and I have been unable to recognise him. And I think I can safely say that we have all experienced times like this, where we have only recognised the presence and work of God after the fact. So what can we learn from the story of the journey on the Emmaus Road? How can we ensure that we are open to recognising Jesus in the world around us and in our own lives? I mean, firstly, it is important to note that it is God who reveals himself to us, not us who reveal him. The disciples on the, the road to Emmaus were kept from recognising Jesus. It is not clear whether this was by divine intervention or if their grief was so high that they didn't recognise him. In likeliness, it would have been a combination of both. But it is likely that they were unable to see Jesus, at least in part, because they were prevented from seeing him. But having said this, we also need to be responsive to God and learning from the Emmaus Road disciples helps us to remain open to hearing from God and recognising his presence and work in the world around us. So as we look at the disciples on the Emmaus Road, we see two people who are overwhelmed with grief, hopelessness, disappointment and confusion. By their own admission, they had believed Jesus was going to be the one to redeem Israel. But his crucifixion had dashed their hopes 
and now they were left in a confused and hopeless state, now wondering what they were meant to do next. These disciples were allowing their emotions of grief, despair and confusion stop them from seeing and hearing God. Their tears blinded them from seeing the face of God right in front of them. Instead of taking their emotions to God and allowing him to help them with it, they allowed their emotions to hide God from them. It is so easy for our emotions to get the better of us. God has given us our emotions and we are meant to feel them to the full and not try to suppress them or ignore them. But we shouldn't allow our emotions to cloud our view of God. Because God gave us our emotions, he can definitely handle them and he can certainly handle them better than we can. Nothing is too much for God to handle. Sometimes we convince ourselves we can't or perhaps we shouldn't come to God with certain emotions such as despair or anger or any other negative feeling because we convince ourselves it's somehow ungodly or unfaithful to feel those things. But this is complete rubbish and it's proven to us when we look at the Bible. A significant percentage of the Psalms are Psalms of lament or expressions of anger. There are even two whole books that focus specifically on negative emotions and situations, the books of Job and Lamentations. I actually read a lovely tweet recently which said, the same Bible that tells us to rejoice always has a book called Lamentations. We don't have to choose one from the other. And I really like that idea that our emotions are not to be hidden from God, but they're to be given to God so that he can help us work through them and allow us to see him more clearly and see the situation more clearly as he helps us handle our emotions. So our emotions should not cloud God from our sight. But we also need to think about the idea of knowing God and not merely knowing about him. So as I said, the disciples believed that Jesus was going to redeem Israel to be the saviour and Messiah they were waiting for. Yet when they were talking to Jesus about it, they said, are you the only ones visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days about Jesus of Nazareth? He was a prophet. Here they refer to Jesus as merely a prophet, not Messiah. Their emotions and, their, and the situation had caused them to doubt what they knew to be true about Jesus. They didn't feel able to trust in the promises laid out in God's word. And they didn't trust in all that Jesus had taught them during the time that these disciples had followed him. These disciples had heard Jesus predict his own death and his resurrection three days later. I mean, this is demonstrated by the fact that they specifically said, and what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. So they had clearly heard Jesus's words and promises about him coming back after three days. And they had heard the testimony of the women who went to the tomb and saw Jesus. And even they had heard of the testimony of the other disciples who went there and found the tomb empty. Yet despite all this, they still believed Jesus was dead. It seems that they knew more about Jesus than actually knowing him personally, having a close and intimate relationship with him as Lord and friend. Jesus responds to their lack of true knowledge of God by rebuking them. How foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? During their walk to Emmaus, a seven mile journey, which would have taken almost two hours, Jesus spoke with them, explaining the scriptures and how they spoke of the suffering Messiah. But even after two hours of listening to him, those disciples still did not recognise who he was. We can have tons of knowledge about God. We can read the Bible and theology books. We can study and examine whatever we find that talks about God. But all of this is useless unless we first and foremost have a relationship with God, unless we know and 
know God and not just about him. Jesus explained what the scripture said. And truly, what better teacher could we ever have to teach us what the Bible says? But even then, the disciples didn't recognise him or understand what the scriptures were saying about him. It was only when they invited him into their house and sat down with Jesus to have a meal with him that they recognised who Jesus was. Think about this. If they hadn't invited Jesus into the house to have a meal with them, they would never have realised who this stranger really was. And in the same way, if we never invite Jesus into our hearts and lives, we will never realise who he is. They only recognised Jesus when he broke the bread. It was, in other words, it was only when they stopped to eat with him and decided to try and get to know this person that they thought was a stranger, that they recognised it was Jesus. How is your relationship with Jesus? Does the amount you know about him outweigh the amount you know him personally? When we learn something about God, it should drive us to love him and worship him more. Our knowledge about God should be second to our love for him. Listen to what the Bible says about God, but also stop and have a meal with him. Stop and spend time with him. He always wants to spend time with you. How amazing is that? The God of the entire universe makes time and even wants to spend time with you whenever you want. I don't think we can say that about any earthly relationship we might have. And I say this as one getting married in two weeks. A relationship with God is the best relationship we can ever have. Nothing else can ever compare. Sorry, Adam. <laughs> So far, we've thought about not letting our emotions get in the way of seeing God. And we've thought about the importance of knowing him and not just knowing about him. And so now we turn to the importance of being open to hearing the testimonies and stories about other people's encounters with God. The Emmaus Road disciples had heard the testimony of the women who had reported back about their experience at Jesus' tomb and the fact that they had met spoken with and even touched Jesus. He wasn't some kind of illusion or a figment of their imagination as they had interacted with him and, and had even confirmed he was a real physical person. Yet despite their testimony, the disciples dismissed their story, probably thinking it was just some hysterical women. You see, women at that time were not thought to be credible, credible witnesses. And so the disciples would have felt justified with not believing them. Sometimes we are sceptical and disbelieving of stories about people encountering God, especially <clears throat> if it comes from someone that society tells us is not a credible witness. I will confess that to my shame, there have been times when I have doubted or been cynical about testimonies from others about their meeting with God. And so I continue to ask God to help me with my belief in his amazing work in people's lives. But we are conditioned by society to be sceptical and downright objecting of spiritual and miraculous things. The world wants everything to be explainable without needing to acknowledge the existence and work of God. And so the world teaches us to doubt the stories we hear. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that we should become naive and gullible, falling for every fanciful story we are spun. After all, we're told to test everything we hear by taking it to God. And Jesus himself said, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves, therefore be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. We need to be shrewd and test what we hear. But we also need to be as innocent as doves and open to seeing and hearing about the work of God. Do not harden yourself to hearing about the testimonies of God's amazing presence in someone's life. Do not become like the Emmaus Road disciples and risk not recognising Jesus because of the stereotypes that society holds. God often uses the most unlikely people to tell his wonderful news. Do not be the people who miss out on hearing from God because of the person who tells the story. 
So as we reflect back on the Emmaus Road encounter, we think about how we need to recognise God by being open to hearing from him, from the testimonies of others, be open to hearing from him and by getting to know him rather than just knowing about him and being open to hearing from him by not allowing our emotions to cloud our view of God. So how do you recognise Jesus in your life and in the world around you?